but that's what we're experimenting with next. That's the next idea. I mean, um, in, in terms of like raw, I was wondering how do you see like the relative importance of like the like on one hand like the network of individuals and ambition, and then on the other hand like the physical space which like you operate in, and how important that is in terms of like fostering that you know kind yeah. of mini creating community. Creating well, that community. is the um, that is the most important part. It's about getting away from the bedroom. Um, I don't know. If, uh, You've had it, but when you're trying to build a model, then the walls stop you from making it good. Um, this space is, was advertised on Gumtree like three years ago for a pound a square foot, and we chose to, to have a small corner of it, and we gradually grew into the whole space. And if that's the question, then it is about how big the space is, and the bigger the space, the more freedom you have to test your ideas. Um, I think. Um, and not compartmentalizing it as well, and having it as an open shared space is quite important. But the politics of that particular type of space is quite interesting to think about because you have certain people who require uh, a box to enclose them because they're louder, they have foul mouths like me, and uh, they, they, they need to be away from the person who's a very quiet person who doesn't want music. But maybe they should be boxed up. So the politics of how you organise it. <laughs> but then have there, have there been kind of like projects or ideas or things that have come out of from you know people sharing the same space then, or is it that? Yeah, well that happens uh, as soon as you come into Flora. There's um, there are various different types of people going at architecture at different angles. And um, for instance, James and Joel, I've given them projects. Uh, house building projects because they're good at building small stuff. However, they, they've given Rara um, the opportunity to have the Imperial War Museum build all their children's experience, um, casting, things like that. Um, there's definitely a collaborative atmosphere. And now we have uh, a, a Studio Six <coughs> who, are, um, who are renting a corner but also being part of the collaboration. Um, yes, that sharing of, of jobs is an interesting one. There's not enough jobs out there, but there are small jobs out there which can pay you. <coughs> I don't share much of my own paid jobs, because I need to get paid. Um, and I don't have enough work to pass on, but I've passed on a few bits and bobs. I think, I think that was a question and an answer. Yeah, yeah. That was an answer. Any other questions? Mm, will Paul take to the stage? <laughs> to do the film? Yep. That's a question and answer. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>
and the RBA have now invited us to put on an exhibition of our results, which it, we're doing in collaboration with Sheffield University students. So these are our, our 12 students from Sheffield University who are helping, who are collaborating with to build this pavilion protest. That's going to be on in the RBA. From it's about a frustration about student debt. And <coughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is me and Zora pre-Zap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, so yeah, we, we tried one thing before we ended up. Um, it wasn't a successful career. Um, first day of things sort of looked better before then. Um, um, this is... What was that? It's called Smug on And uh, yeah, wallpaper and uh, dresses were designed by yeah. the other. I think this is where like, student finance came in. This is my dad he used to um, he used to freestyle as a Santa every Christmas to bring in funding for the Christmas presents. I guess that's where my preoccupation with funding and money came into the play. And this is my family, that's me on the left. Um, yeah. Next slide. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Zora's ex-boyfriend she hits me. I got to my mum and I'm back in the play. I so, so I went for a phase of tip xing him from every photograph. Uh, yeah, really, we did talk about him. It became really embarrassing. He's really famous now, he's done well for himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my uncle Jonathan. <laughs> um, but he's a perfect example of people that should never be left with kids because kids are quite impressionable. Um, so, yeah, my parents never wanted him to spend too much time alone with, with me. Um, is that you, Dad? But yeah, there's some people who should never have. <laughs> uh, same gym shirt and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> What's like coming out of the back of you? <laughs> I watched for a while. Um, uh, yeah, this photo I find particularly offensive because I don't know why the guy's not wearing any pants. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, Yes. But architectural drawing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a pantheon drawing. Yeah. Paul tried out for Westlife. Yeah, I went through an undergraduate pretending I was the sick member of Westlife in an attempt to meet a girlfriend. Hasn't worked. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I haven't seen these, and I have no idea what's that. I'm going to talk about Vent now actually because we launched a competition um, to try and get because uh, people were always coming up to us hearing about the exhibition that we're putting on and seeing how they could get involved um, and so we launched a competition and we've had a great response this isn't one of the entries but we've had some amazing responses from all over the world we've basically asked people to do an A2 uh, landscape drawing responding to the rising cost of architectural education and all those um, well yeah Depends how many we have room for in the RBA when we start designing the competition, uh, the yeah. exhibition, but we're going to kind of, be showing It opposes the signature architect you know, and celebrates student skills, the type of kind of student design that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that doesn't allow things like this type of good design and kind of intellectual thinking that doesn't allow ridiculous things like this to happen. Um, but yeah, it's a celebration of student skills and we want to promote what skills we have, and that we don't, we don't promote bad design. This is an example in, I think, is LinkedIn, where it'll be seen this example as a, as a precedent, and we thought, okay, we'll have that, and this is actually what it's turned out as. And it's a perfect example of waiting, wasting um, public money or governmental money, and there's, there's a huge frustration. How they've done this, this skill in Angel, it, it, it kind of saturates public money, and every year they try and reinstall this green wall, and it just doesn't happen. Um, and this is Michael Go, who's invited to our exhibition because he's someone who said that architects earn too much, that they've been creaming off the top, that they've um, they've monopolised on kind of the public spending of money in design. And um, so, well, he's yeah. We were at the Reba Forum in June, we presenting some of our work in a more serious manner. <laughs> and uh, we were actually there when Ruth Reed said her famous comment that um, yeah, the government has told us that there's too many architects. So this is 
um, yeah, opened quite an interesting line of debate alongside our exhibition about, you know, are, has Rima sanctioned too many architecture degrees? You know, does there need to be limited places? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, based on the previous slide, I think um, what turns out is you, you have a large lower cost who can enter architecture simply because they can afford it. And that, they, it doesn't mean they're good designers, it doesn't mean they're good architects for the future, it doesn't mean the built environment in the future will benefit. And they're not necessarily reflecting the um, demographic of the population that they're designing for, which is... So, the architect will be someone who can afford to study architecture for five, seven years, and not someone who's necessarily a good designer. And this is our exhibition, which happens from the 25th of October to the 17th of November. Um, and we hope that it represents all architecture students and all designers. Yeah, and I'm going to be sitting on the Reaper Education Committee, so if anyone's, I'm supposed to be like the voice of the youth, so if anyone's going to be like the burning <laughs> things that they need to say to the RBA, then uh, please get in touch, at, like Twitter or just come and speak to me. Yeah. Cool. Got so, it? I apologise about this. Yeah, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Buying an education, sort of in architecture, especially. At what point do you think that's going to saturate to the point where it will take jobs off people who are good at it? Does that make sense? Um, well, next year, because basically our, our survey results found that it's already costing about sixty-five thousand pounds to do five years of architecture. So, with the increase in fees, uh, we projected that to be eighty-eight thousand something yeah. something. And you know, really, I mean, would you recommend to a cousin or somebody who's at? Well, who's, I, I mean, in terms of. Yes, they'll be able to afford it and do it, but do you think there'll be a point when like, people who just can afford it and aren't good at it will start taking jobs of people who actually care and are good at it? Well, the point is that society and the government want less architects, and this is one surefire way to filter the amount of architects, but filter them in such a way that it's financially driven rather than talent driven. Um, but I think that's something that we need to sort out in-house. I mean, I think with our exhibition we're really aware that we're probably not going to change the um, government's idea to increase tuition fees. We're trying to be more realistic, we're trying to have more realistic goals and trying to kind of start a debate within architectural profession and to, to try and work out what we can do ourselves. Does part two need to change? You know, um, do, do practices need to look after, you know, students coming on more? It needs to, we need to sort it out in-house before we can even go kind of to the wider public, I think, and Michael Go, he probably won't come. He's been invited, but you know, I'd love him to come. But um, yeah, I don't even know if we've got our message that we want to say to them yet, because yeah. I don't think we've sorted it out. So it's a case where we, we have to approach the higher level governmental people unless we can sort it out within ourselves. And I think that's a huge issue. So once that's sorted, then we can go to a higher level. Well, I argue that it's already taking place. That it's already. No, I, I agree. I, just, I was just wondering sort of how. It will never be a point when someone will just buy a job and buy a good at being architecture. They'll, they'll no, be able to buy the first bit. But like, with the predicted rise in, in fees for education, it's basically getting closer and closer to what the AA is, which is yeah. that you've got lots of people who are very wealthy who can afford to go somewhere where they have amazing lecturers, and they subsidise a bunch of people who are very, very talented, very few people who are very talented. And that's closer and closer to what the state's offering now. But I feel that's a whole kind of argument about whether or not you think that this is a kind of, you know, it's basically the opposite to a vicious circle. It's kind of, you know, if, if the people's parents have been able to afford the education and get the better jobs and they've got the more time to spend with their kids or they've got, you know, there's books in the house, whatever, it's always like some, it's just going to increase the divide in society. Some people are going to be able to get on that positive spiral and other people are just going to be, you know, it's just going to be impossible. But is it? Um, I don't know how you spent and funded your university career, but I uh, would not have been able to afford the loan that I now have my name on. What happened, I'm sure, it's very familiar with everyone, is you get a certain amount of money each year and you don't really notice that that's accumulating. And then at the end of it, you've got a long sum. You don't really notice that you've got a long sum because you paid off really incrementally. And you say that perhaps. Uh, this is going to start dividing the rich from the poor, those who can enter architecture education because the fees are going up. But could it be that just the loans get bigger and like what I did, I'm sure a lot of you guys did, you just can ignore that and with the uh, provision, uh, uh, be that rumour or whatever, that you can pay that off because the 
the, the money you earn at the end of the rainbow is going to be there, you know? Well, so it's, it might, I've got it's two, two things about that. Like Firstly, um, people from less privileged backgrounds are more wary about taking out sizable lens like that, especially people who work very hard to get to the sort of, you know, upper working class, as parents would be very wary of them taking out such a large loan. But also, um, you know, we, compared to other professions, actually don't earn that much. I saw, um, yeah, statistics on money-saving experts, but any place to get your statistics, um, that actually most architects, relative to the proportion that they're going to earn, will never actually pay back these big loans. You'll be working and you'll be paying back, and yeah, then you'll retire and you'll still, you'll still own money, but it'll be scrapped at the end of it. But then you're just, so it's basically what they're actually introducing for architects, less so for medics and lawyers who earn more initially, is a graduate tax. And then they've just done that very kind of, you know, subtly, and I, I don't know if that's something that we've all agreed to, or has even been discussed. Mm. I'd like to know more. Alright, will we move on to the next? Thanks for watching. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.